Good morning and welcome to Carico Coffee. We're delighted to be able to host this session at GLF Biodiversity Conference, where as the only private sector company, we're able to join a dialogue which has been part of our journey for four years now. We at Carico Coffee have been working with farmers on in Mount Elgon in Bugisu. And we're privileged to host this session where we will have a round table where some farmers have joined us to be able to discuss the journey of Carico Coffee and the journey of how we see biodiversity interacting with business. Firstly, what we would like to do is to be able to take you through a short introduction in the form of a trailer where you will be able to see some of the things that we have journeyed through over the last few years. During the session, we will have some conversations with the audience. Um, so please have your telephones ready so that we can use the Slido option on that so we can get your input and we can see what the people who have joined us from all around the world are thinking. Thank you. Some rumor that it is on these slopes that the Garden of Eden lay. After all, where else could such beauty be? Others suggest the meaning of the name of the capital in Bali is hidden treasure, but it's probably from the local word for stone. 25 million years ago, a solitary volcano in the center of Africa erupted, leaving the world's largest caldera with five peaks of over 4,000 meters. It is now home to over a million people, nearly 300 species each of birds and trees, numerous small mammals, and five primates. Today, Nearly 40 are globally threatened, with six on the brink of extinction. Over 2,300 metres, the top fifth of Mount Elgon is a registered UNESCO biosphere. Three tribes cultivate the adjacent land, kilometres beyond where the roads end. Here, in fertile, loamy soils watered from the summit, they farm traditionally, intercropping and using shade to create a harmonious interdependence that also produces a unique, fine coffee. With tree cover being lost for fuel and food, changing and unpredictable climate, man too could face extinction. This is a tipping point and a moment of choice. Now we go over to Ndiro Cafe in Mbale. Mbale is the main town in Eastern Uganda, where we will have, where Mwambu Wanandea, the CEO and founder of Carico, and Emmanuel Masaba, who's the head of business development, will take us through a roundtable discussion. Mwambu, over to you. Hello, Nina, and thank you very much for that introduction. Welcome, wherever you are in the world, it's just past one o'clock here in Mbale, and it's now well into the rainy season, but it's also the harvest season in Uganda's Arabica capital. I am Emma. Before we get started, for those who, those watching from all over the world, we have COVID regulations, which the team are following, but fortunately, allow us to do this. Emma, take us through the people on the panel, please. Okay. To my immediate right is uh, Priscilla Mongoma, who happens to be uh, a co-founder and managing director of uh, Mobile Coffee, a local 
uh, initiative that promotes the consumption of coffee in Uganda. Yeah, mobile coffee is a pilot project of coffee a cup. Also a local coffee cooperative at which Priscilla previously worked as operations and finance manager. Coffee a cup uh, was based in Bududa district and operated in the coffee growing districts found around Mount Elgon, focusing mainly on improving the income of smallholder farmers in the region. Priscilla, you're welcome. To Mwambu's right, uh, the lady in pink is uh, Madame Judith uh, Namkisa. She's, uh, she hails from Bududa as well. She's the treasurer of a uh, cooperative we work with, that is Bududa Bufuma Organic Coffee Cooperative Society Limited. Yeah. Um, she's a mother and a passionate farmer. Yes, um, she's a she, she's been she's been a founder. I mean, not a founder. She's been a treasurer of of the cooperative since its inception, and she mainly handles uh, the incoming uh, cash flows and 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 stock of of, of the cooperative. <laughs> You're welcome, Madam Judith. To Judith is right. The gentleman on the other side is uh, the chairman of the cooperative, Mr. Mwini. Mr. Nathan Mweni, um, and he also hails from Buruda district on the slopes of Mount Elgon. He is also a passionate farmer. He says he started it mainly in 1999 and runs a two acre farm of, of, of coffee. He's a father and a husband. He loves farming uh, of coffee, trees, and does some bee, beekeeping as well. Yeah. He, he started uh, Bududa Bufuma Organic Coffee Cooperative Society in 2016 and now has, over, has, 2000, has 322 farmers with a total of about 1,000 acres uh, farming land for the coffee on the slopes of Mount Elgon. You're welcome, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. We have a distinguished panel here, which is very experienced. Uh, in all sides of the coffee business, particularly on the slopes of Mount Elgon. The purpose of today's session is to show you what we have done and learned as a company since 2016, working with coffee. Our smallholder farmers in Bugisu have their farms at an altitude of between 1300 and 2200 meters above sea level on Mount Elgon and next to UNESCO biosphere. To give you a sense of what the life of a Bugisu coffee farmer who manages to produce quality specialty coffee. We talked to some farmers 10 days ago. The reason why you are here, you are trying to I'm going Ibrahim. What keeps you awake at night? If you could change one thing to make the landscape better, what could it be and why? What else do you think will make a difference in your earning from coffee? If you could change one thing to make landscape better, what could it be and why?
Okay. Okay. What bothers you about the future of coffee in this location? What interventions has made the biggest difference in coffee farming? Weather. Weather affecting Kakuriakura <laughs> Okay. Um, Mwambu, we need to, we can't hear you. Can you please turn the video up, please? Sorry. As Nina mentioned, we'll be asking you some questions in the audience. So what we'd like to ask you now is coming up and it's a question on Slido. Okay, so for everybody, the question is, um, do you think consumers are doing enough to make sure coffee farmers are paid enough? If you could please rate on a scale from one to five, where one is no, they're doing nothing, and five being yes, they're doing enough. So just from your perspective, if you could answer that, that would be great. I can see we've got 14 responses so far, and uh, the more we get, the more of a handle we get as to how we move forward. Thank you. We'll be bringing you the results of that poll later. That was our first question on Slido. Now we turn to our round table to ask them a few questions about what it's like to be a coffee farmer and the challenges in the industry. If I could turn to you, Judith. You're the treasurer of the cooperative, which we work with no, no. closely. What is your role as treasurer? What does that entail? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to translate for for Judith. She's speaking. She's going to be speaking in the local dialect. So I'm going to uh, repeat for everyone. Mm -hmm. And the question is to Judith. You've been the treasurer of the cooperative. What does your work entail as treasurer? My Judith, ba hure vere bari. We we gomuli ndiwe kampe sa mushtongo le chenye kumuli mokuo ni oshina. 
akumli makuange mstongo leshe kama pesa kuhu akani la kama pesa kuno na kwa mbali ni la mungu mzela sasa kaha kata mo ne humanya hakato hola si na kumi ndugu bufu ni sibu mwana so she says she's in charge of all the finances of the cooperative she ensures and verifies that money going in and money coming in um money going in and money coming in is uh is accounted for and she signs off of anything that has to do with money for the cooperative thank you very much for your reply judith and priscilla for your translations to luma saba in english Nathan, you founded this uh, cooperative some years back, and you're a coffee farmer. Why did you become a coffee farmer? Yes, uh, to become a coffee farmer, uh, my father learned farmer, and they teach us when they get the money from the coffee. They're supposed to teach us. But now I grow when I know that coffee is something good. Then I plan to make members and a community. We sit and we make our comparative as a community. Now, now we share with the members. Then we start planning to build our comparative. We start 24 members. Now we have 324 yeah. members to support community no. as Now, we are still, still planning, especially Keriko Kav, Kav. When he find us, we started our comparative with 216. Now we are, we are now 220. Keriko Kav come to 18. They start to plan for us and give us advice how to involve in our comparative. One, they assist us advice. That's the first thing. The Keriko Cup assist us advice how to plan our coffee and how to maintain it. Now, it, it, they don't leave us like that. They still see us when he reached on that, uh, that crown. You see, we don't have pulping machines. Keriko Cup assist us as a comparative no. This is a machine to assist us to put our coffee. Uh, he, leave, he don't leave us like that. He's still no. giving advice. And that is in our what in our coffee plantation, the way the coffee can be well. And when he, the stones comes, they cannot affect our coffee. Now we are good, we are, we are still uh, going with Keriko Cup to support us as a what? As a comparative. And we have so many things which Keriko Cup assists us. One, he brings, he brings for us seeds to maintain our COVID. He, he gives us the good advice how to maintain it to get real, real coffee. One, he said that when you pulp your coffee and you cover it, the coffee will make good things. Now, we are still, we are still getting advice from Keriko Cup. Now, I will not go much with that, but we are appreciating Keriko Cup to support us. As you, with which we deal, the, the, your, the company which we deal with Keriko Cup, now, if you support Keriko Cup, then the Keriko Cup support us. We will be very happy as a farmer. Thank you very much for that, Nathan. Um, uh, Priscilla, as you know, we've been working with Nathan's cooperative for some time, and we're trying to work on, do some projects on biodiversity. You've done a lot of work on biodiversity on Mount Elgin. What are the challenges facing the farmers regarding biodiversity on Mount Elgin? Well, uh, right now, I think the, the biggest challenge has been the crack in the mountain. Everybody's aware of that crack, that crack in the mountain. Um, it's uh, created a lot of waterfalls uh, around the Elgon zone. And there's a lot of water uh, 
going down the mountain and, and there's a lot of soil erosion in that process and it's washing away the nutrients of the soil and going uh, also with all the mountainous microorganisms that help with the soil nutrition. There's also a uh, high density of population in, in Mount Elgon region. So every single part of the mountain is being cultivated. That means that the, the room, there's no room for, for the soil to breathe. There's no room for, um, uh, for the soil to rejuvenate. So there's a high level of soil nutrition, I mean, soil, um, soil uh, over cultivation. And then they also have introduced different varieties of coffee because everyone is interested in a higher yield and everyone wants to get a better quality and a shorter uh, lifespan of, of, the, of, the, of the tree. And previously, Nyasa land, which is uh, the, the variety that we've been growing for centuries, has been better resistant to disease and pests. But the newer types are causing a lot of uh, pests and diseases, and farmers are being forced to use pesticides. That's all killing the natural mi microorganisms in the soil. So that's created a, a, a big problem for a coffee production. It's producing a smaller seed. It's it's uh, producing less quality, I mean, a, a lesser quality of a coffee. So those are the main problems that are uh, affecting the mountain. And lastly, but not least, is a lot of tree cutting, as we said previously, in, uh, like you see in the video, they need, uh, they, they need the firewood to cook their food. They need, uh, uh, they, they, they cut down the trees for, for fuel and food. They just, uh, and because they don't have enough land to grow trees, so that's become a problem. For, for the farmers and the coffee quality. Thank you very much for your reply, Priscilla. Now, Priscilla, you mentioned that uh, the microorganisms are being destroyed yes. uh, by people using pesticides. Yes. And also that the farmers are cutting down a lot of trees because they need the, they, they're using these trees for firewood. Sure. Uh, Emma, you know about the project that we're doing at Carico Cafe to improve uh, the nutrients in the soil and also to plant trees using tr trees. Could you outline what the program is and what sort of uh, reaction it's had from the farmers on the slopes? Yes, I can. Well, we, we have a plan of planting um, a thousand trees by, uh, well, I would say mid next year. Uh, we started off, we started off, I would say last month. We have uh, had good response from the farmers, um, particularly because we start with the, with the part of, of education. We, we sensitize them on why it's necessary to plant these trees. And I mean, and they're, they're seeing the use, just like Priscilla said, they, they, they relate it to the day-to-day -day needs of, of, of cooking food and all that. So uh, apart from that, we've sensitized them that the ones that we're pretty, uh, from, uh, pushing them to, to plant, these are more of the indigenous trees that existed there before. And these, these help with the nutrition in the soil. And, and they farmers also know this. The only thing is they've, they've been finding it hard to find those very siblings and also the education on, on, on what to do. So we, in, 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 in understanding from the experts in the field of, of, of coffee and trees, we, we're working hand in hand to make sure we can help uh, replenish the area from which we are, we are getting the coffee from. And we believe this will help in uh, preserving or, or at least recovering uh, the nutrition of the, of the soil. Yeah. Thank you very much for your comprehensive answer there, Emma. Nathan, as a farmer and head of the cooperative, how successful do you think will be in rolling out this tree planting project? And will the farmers really give it more increased support to plant the trees? Pardon? Will the farmers really support the tree planting project that we've started and understand the benefits of it? Yes. Uh, as me as a chairman, when we plant uh, the trees, uh, the comparative will our coffee will be good because even if the stones from the heaven comes, they cannot affect our coffee when we plant the trees. Two, the soil, when we plant the trees, the soil will become fertile. Because the trees of the soil, when he flows down, the coffee will get fertile. 
Three, when we plant the, the trees, we are going to use others as firewood, as a, a society. Uh, when we plant that trees, it's going to control soil erosion to remove our coffee, the, the fertile which is in the coffee, remove, but when we plant the trees, they will control it. The, the, the coffee become well. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, as you've heard from the panel, some of the challenges facing the farmers are the pesticides being used, which are killing the microorganisms, uh, the tree cutting of trees for use for firewood, and the soil erosion. This area is endemic to landslides, and every year, dozens of people die from landslides in the Mount Elgin region. So there are three main problems there, which are solvable. Now you've heard what the problems are, and we'll be coming up with another question for you in the audience. And we'd like to hear your questions. If you have any questions to put to us, or we can go to another question to you. While we wait to see if there are any questions from the audience, we can continue our discussion on the microorganisms. Uh, Priscilla, you've yes. done work on microorganisms. What are the solutions other than planting trees? What could we implement? Well, we, when I was working with the cooperative, we introduced to about maybe 4,000 farmers, fair trade certified, uh, a program that we, we studied from Latin America, Peru, and it, it, we, it was called MM Technology, which reintroduces mountainous microorganisms into the soil uh, through a whole process. Um, uh, we trained them how to make bokashi and then we used an MM solution that you basically get uh, uh, an area that's really fertile that has those microorganisms and you grow them and then you spread them throughout uh, every garden. So we taught each farmer how to, 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 to make their own bokashi and to grow the mi microorganisms and then to spread them all over their garden. And it was very effective, um, but it, 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 it's, a, it's a program that needs to be supported. It can't have uh, just uh, individual households, run, not individual farmers cannot do it alone. It has to have uh, government intervention. It has to have the, the uh, buyers and, and, and um, several cooperatives to work in hand in hand to really get the whole mountain to have uh, the my, my, microorganisms back into the soil. So it's a, it's a very, um, it's a very intense, uh, intense uh, program that needs to be uh, run by everyone. Thank you very much for that reply. We've had some feedback from the audience. Uh, one comment was great to see that C4 and ECRAF are working in the Mount Elgin region. And that, that's a very good comment. Now a question which is probably for the cooperative, uh, which is to Nathan, uh, how much coffee is produced by the cooperative in a year? in an average year, given that in the even years it is less and in the odd years it's higher. Yes. Yes. Now, as me, as chairman, when we, this, the, the last year, we produce a lot of coffee, roughly there, eight tons of parchment. But now this year, the season is not good. We are, we are thinking that when you go to wishes, we can get 40, 30 there tons of parchment because the season is not good. Why? Why the season is not good? Because the rain, there is a lot of rain this year and uh, coffee has not Cumulate very well. Why we are, we are going to get little what? Little coffee. But when you call the wishes, give us life. 221, we are going to support, we are going to get uh, below, uh, the, the highest coffee because we know when you go to wishes, the, 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 the sun comes, we are going to be okay. But this year, we're going to get little because the problem of, of, of water. 
But it is Scottish plan, you cannot comment that it is bad, it is Scottish plan. Thank you. Thank you very much for that reply, Nathan. So every odd year, the yield is higher on the Mount Elgin region. And this year being an even year, the yield is lower. Uh, and also there's been a lot of rain, and as Nathan explained, the heavy rainfall has reduced the harvest. Another question from the audience, a comment is about uh, how effective is the implementations of fair trade and other arrangements that are meant to help farmers feel secure through trade equity. Now, as uh, a body that works with the farmers, uh, we pay above the market rate. Uh, in fair trade, in particular, what happened is that many of the big buyers in the United Kingdom, uh, which are the supermarkets, they had set up their own schemes, which they term fairly traded. So the impact of the certification process fair trade has been reduced. Um, its impact on, on what happens to the farmers and what happens to the consumers. But as a business, we pay over and above the market rate. And by eliminating the middlemen, we're able to conserve the price that the consumer pays, but also pay the farmer higher. But Nathan, you paying the farmers an equitable wage is something that is of concern, isn't it? Pardon? Paying the farmers enough for their coffee is something that is of concern in the community, the coffee farming community. Yes. What do you think can be done to improve this? Now, uh, to improve the farmers to be okay about the payment of coffee, as Kerico Cup support us to give us something, it means that we are going to get coffee from the farmers because the farmers, when they bring coffee, they need to pay them. Now it means Kerifuka Cup, when they support us, a half of the money which we agree with him, now we are going to welcome that coffee to reach the level which we agree with the Kerifuka Cup. Thank you very much for that reply. Now, uh, Priscilla, you were very active on the slopes of Mount Elgin there, yes. working with a lot of farmers. What comments do you have on the certification arrangements that uh, the farmers sometimes and the organizations sometimes try and implement? Well, for, for fair trade, the biggest uh, problem is, is, is the, the fees that we have to pay just to sustain the license. It's $10,000 a month. For a small cooperative, it's really hard to, to, to run that type of um, to, to maintain the, the licensing for, for, for fair trade. Also, uh, for you to implement the good practices that come along with fair trade, it's, it's a very intense process. There's a lot of training that happens. There's a lot of data collection in the field. You have to uh, ensure that each, each farm is inspected. Uh, it's, a, it's a very tedious process and, and it, it takes a lot of money. And I don't know if the value is there for, for, for the cooperative in the end. They lose a lot of money just to maintain um, at the license. So I, 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 and then at the end of it, it, it the, 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 the price they get for this coffee is still not enough for the work they put in, you know? So, so I don't know if they should make the amount higher or the, 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 the buyers should support these small cooperatives to, to make sure maybe they pay their licensing or maybe support their efforts in the field. It's, it's a very tedious process, so. That's, that's what I think about certification and fair trade. For Rainforest Alliance and, and 4C, I think it's even more stringent for Rainforest Alliance just to get that certification because conserving, con, con, Rainforest is more interested in conserving the, the soils and making sure that um, the environment is, is, is intact. And that is even more stringent. Like the requirements are so high, the farmers um, have to do so much to to to, to just get uh, rainforest. So um, the support they can do it, but they need a lot of support and, and a, a lot of support in in financing, especially running around and and the, the field workers making sure that the farmers are doing the right thing. And so it's it's a very tedious process and expensive. That's what I. Think. Thank you very much for your comments, there, Priscilla. Now, there's been a, an impact, the change, the climate has changed in the Bugisu region in the last 20, 30 years. Um, just on Tuesday, when we were up in the mountains, where you come from, Nathan, there's a waterfall there called Goloko. 
what is the name of that water hole? Ololoho. Ololoho. Yes. Now, <laughs> that, that, that waterfall, the name, uh, the direct translation is you can't do anything with it. And that's because the water there was extremely cold 20, 30 years back because it, the river was sheltered by trees all the way down. So the water was so cold that when you pass that water pool, you couldn't bathe in it or you know, touch the water because it was too cold. It subsequently warmed up. Yes. Now that's a, a, a very good anecdotal story of the impact of climate change. Nathan, as a farmer, what other changes have you seen in the climate in this area? Have the rains changed, the season, the timing of them, the amount of rain? Yes. Now, the changes of uh, the changes of uh, our area there uh, when the rain rains, we get a lot of problems. One, uh, our coffee when the rains, we don't get the way we can protect our coffee. But when the camp on Keriko Kafu camp, see that we river or local. They tell us that when we plan, we get there electricity from that ololoho, which makes a lot of noise. <laughs> it will protect a community about how to run the way to maintain as a society. Now, we are requesting Keriko Kafu to support us that thing. Two, when the rain rains, we have problems in the transport. Traveling, carrying our coffee from Bufuma Shilakano to take Bunandutu, when they rig to Bunandutu, they rig, they, they, we get the truck to take to Bali. Why? Other days, Mr. Mwambu get a challenge from you when he don't rig to the time of exporting you coffee. You can claim he, him like, why did Mr. Mwambu not bring a quick coffee? That is the big challenge we have up there. Now, if you support Mr. Mwambu in that problem, now it means that COVID will come quickly to South Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nathan, um, uh, for your support. Uh, we enjoy working with your cooperative. <laughs> now, as we do have big climate changes, as Nathan has outlined some of them, when it rains, it's difficult to harvest and the harvest is less. And also the roads are practically impossible. Uh, the, last, uh, the last five kilometers going up to Nathan's place, we have to walk. And it's a very steep walk up rugged mountain trails. So carrying down the product, the coffee to take to market is, is quite a challenge. Um, I want to thank everybody for your time. Unfortunately, we're coming to the end of our time. And I don't know if any of the panel have any closing remarks. Uh, I'll turn first to you, Judith, if you have anything that you feel you want to add briefly. Uh, uh, support you for supporting Mr. Mwambu. Amanya lana abe kusubira hore mu byose byose kwa mukani ha singa mu losera ko kwa tjeki ko birira ku Mr Mwambu atwelane a madamu uli ku muhono kwewe ne papo yo ukagasa kuri ne babana bafu bimusisinza cyose kuri mo ngese tureshara wabo ikana basome a mugagasa ndi singa lugudo rwabarulayi byose kulomire singa mu akokorera Imani, can I eat a movie for Vienna and get in the Hubra Moon? Miss Mambuga no more week in Omer. Hokagasa for Singamua, Kamasanya Razi, Hava Nenako, who sees the chess holding an issue. A valley mean and never can ever be a neckaman in Hova Nabar. We share the Kanamakan show in the Humbuga, the Bamana Mona, Vilma, your favorite money, a Vin Kalamania. So I'll just interpret for her. Thank you. She says thank you to everyone, especially to Kariko um, Cafe. She she's very grateful for the support that you've provided for for them and their community, and she's uh, hopeful that as you bring in more support in terms of uh, repairing the road up to to their their community and uh, as well as um, getting the electricity to them, 
they will have um, more zeal to produce better quality coffee and to produce uh, a higher quality coffee and 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 and, uh, and, uh, and send to to you guys out there <laughs> so she's really grateful and she's pray and she's thankful to emma also and to me is what she said and that um She's hoping for the best for her, her community. And, to, uh, and she also said to educate the, the youth uh, uh, and orphans in their, in, their, in their village, right? In their community, sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, for Priscilla, for that translation. In, some, in case some of you are very interested by the language in which Judith is speaking, Luma Saba, you can go to www.karika.copy website and you can learn some Luma Saba, which is also called Lugisu. So you have an opportunity there to practice your Luma Saba. Uh, we'd like to thank the Global Landscapes Forum for this opportunity to bring some of our farmers down from the mountain, from up there at 2,200 meters above sea level, um, the in, down into Mbale, relative lowland at 1,300 meters above sea level to participate in this panel. We'd like to thank very much the members of the panel, Mr. Nathan Muni, Judith, treasure of the society and there's there they farm on the edge of a un biosphere which is a very beautiful place at very high altitude they're very lucky to live there very clean fresh air crisp cold water in the morning from the mountain streams we'd also like to thank my colleague mr emmanuel masaba uh, for joining us on this panel and assisting us and also priscilla mungoma uh, thank you very much uh, for people who joined in and participated from around the world and sent in their questions on hova and with that, we are wrapping up and uh, closing the panel. Thank you very, very much, everybody who joined in and sent their replies, which will be communicated later, the replies to the slide. From us here in Mbale, in Eastern Uganda, on the slopes of Mount Elgon, we thank you for your time. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Mwambu, and thank you very much to the panel. Um, and we obviously uh, are delighted to have been able to showcase uh, you from Mbale um, all around the world. And hopefully this will um, give people a better sense of Karako, its work and its insistence on trying to do the right thing by trying to keep the triple bottle line going. So thank you all very much. And thank you very much to everybody who has listened in today. <laughs>